Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about how I use masking fluid to protect certain areas of my paintings from getting watercolour paint on them. I have been receiving loads of comments from you guys recently about asking how I keep certain areas of my paintings white when it looks like I'm getting paint all over them. So in today's video I'm just going to show you how I do that. So for this tutorial I am using the Daylet and Rowney masking fluid and I think this was about £6 for this bottle and I'm also using an old paintbrush. When this stuff dries it becomes a latex so it clogs up the paintbrush quite a lot so therefore it's really good to use an old paintbrush that you don't mind getting wrecked. So I just pour a bit of that masking fluid into a palette and I dip my paintbrush into it. I've already drawn out the sketch onto my paper so in this tutorial I'm just going to demonstrate it using some flowers. And basically you want to apply this masking fluid to the parts of the painting that you want to keep white. So the areas that you don't want to get paint on, that you want to preserve so that you can use whatever you want on them later without worrying about getting paint all over them when you're doing your backgrounds. So I go ahead and I apply this stuff to the flowers and the leaves around it that I want to keep white. This means that when you're doing your background you really don't have to worry, you can be messy and you don't have to worry about making sure that you don't get paint on those areas. Masking fluid is also really good for other types of effects so I use it a lot to create little splatters and drops on my work. So I just put some masking fluid on the paintbrush and I tap it or I kind of flick the paintbrush to get some more dramatic splatters. And this means that when you rub off that masking fluid you have little white dots and splatter marks and it helps to create texture and it makes it look really nice and I really like that effect. So once you have applied all of your masking fluid, it's important to let it dry. You'll know it's dry when you touch it because none of the masking fluid will come off onto your fingers. It might feel slightly tacky, but it won't be wet at all and it won't deposit anything onto your fingers when you touch it. When creating your splatters, if you want to create slightly bigger droplets, then just use a bigger paintbrush and it will deposit bigger drops onto the paper. There's also lots of different YouTube videos out there about how to create different effects using masking fluid so make sure you check out some other YouTube videos for more different ways to create effects but this is how I like to use it. It doesn't normally take masking fluid that long to dry so normally I leave it about half an hour and I can tell because it looks slightly darker when it's dry to when it's wet it becomes more of a darker yellow so I know then if it's darkened a bit I then just touch it to make sure it's completely dry before going in with my watercolours but it doesn't really take that long to dry. So now that I've applied the masking fluid I just go in with those watercolours and I start painting in the background. As you can see the paint does go onto the flowers however when we peel it away there won't be any paint left onto those parts that we've applied the masking fluid. It's really good because you can see that it can be really messy and I don't have to worry about those areas that I don't want to get paint on. If you don't have this masking fluid then it really limits the creativity because you, have, you can't be messy with it if you don't have the masking fluid on top. So now that I've finished all the work with the watercolours and let them dry, I can start peeling off that masking fluid. So to do this, rub your finger along where the masking fluid is and gently peel it away. You don't want to try and peel it off too quickly or too harshly, otherwise it might tear the paper. If you're using a cheaper quality paper, then I recommend testing it before you go on with the masking fluid onto your original piece because it can sometimes tear some of the cheaper, lower quality papers. So it's worth testing it out before. It is really easy to spot where the masking fluid is because when you rub your finger along, you should be able to feel it. So for example, it's really easy to find those bits of masking fluid where you did the little dots because if you rub your fingers along you'll feel the bumps of the masking fluid. As you can see the masking fluid has become that latex feel so it's really easy to peel it away. So after I have peeled away all the masking fluid I just go in with a tissue paper and I wipe away all the bits of excess bits of latex that have been left on the painting and this also helps me to spot any bits that I have missed so then I just go in with my fingers and just test around the painting to see if there's any little bits that I have missed on those little dots. 
And here you can see the splatter effect a bit more with those dots using that masking fluid and how it does help to create a bit more texture in the painting. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss out on my future tutorials and painting videos. Also remember to leave a like and you can follow me on all the social media sites. Links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.